in the vast expanse of the North Atlantic amidst the height of the European theater of World War II. One of the most feared predators of the sea is on the prowl. Within the steel hull of U-32, feared and respected commander Hans Jenisch observes a struggling figure on the horizon. It's RMS Empress of Britain, damaged by a German aircraft, on fire, and making her way towards safety with the help of tugs. At this point, U-32 has been maneuvering in the depths of the Atlantic unseen, undeterred, and ready to etch yet another victory for the Kriegsmarine. With no time to lose, Yenis runs his fingers over the torpedo release mechanism, ready to strike. With the torpedoes at the ready, one thing was clear. The Canadian fleet was almost certain to lose its largest ship. A natural sailor. Born in 1913, Hans Jenisch's naval journey began aboard the cruiser Deutschland, where he learned all the lessons that would become the bedrock of his maritime prowess. While the ship was a tough instructor, Jenisch was a naturally gifted sailor and a willing student. However, despite his early work aboard the cruiser, his destiny lay elsewhere, in the infamous U-boat arm of the newly established Kriegsmarine. In 1937, as the world teetered on the precipice of another global conflict, Jenisch was placed in U-32 and thrust into the heart of Germany's powerful underwater fleet. One of the first ten German Type 7 submarines to be built, but eventually designated as Type 7A, the vessel displaced 616 tons when surfaced and 733 while submerged. Widely considered an engineering marvel at the time, U-32 was armed with four bow torpedo tubes and carried a total of 11 torpedoes. Driven by two supercharged Germania Werft six-cylinder four-stroke diesel engines, the submarine boasted a max surface speed of 17.7 .7 knots and a submerged speed of 8 knots. Jenisch worked as the second-in-command under the seasoned Captain Werner Lott when the war erupted in 1939, and the duo's combined expertise formed a formidable partnership. In February 1940, Yenish's moment truly arrived when he assumed command of U-32. The Kriegsmarine's newest Capitan Lieutenant was prepared to steer his menacing U-boat towards one mission, instilling dread in the hearts of the Allies. Patrol Duty On March 2, 1940, during his initial war patrol as a submarine commander, Yenish sank Lagerholm, a Swedish motor merchant vessel. From that point forward, the captain and the 35 men under his command began to amass a large tally of sunken ships, sometimes confirmed, but often unverified. During his fourth war patrol on June 18th of that same year, Yenish sank the American destroyer USS Altair and two Spanish trawlers, Nuevo Onz and Salvora. Within the span of 24 hours, two more Allied vessels, Laboud and Eli Knudsen were sent to the bottom of the ocean with their precious cargo inside them. By the end of the patrol, Yanis was credited with the destruction of a total of 16,098 gross registered tons of shipping. In late August 1940, HMS Fiji, a Royal Navy light cruiser, was on her way to the African Atlantic coast to take part in Operation Menace, an Allied scheme to capture the strategic port of Dakar in French West Africa. However, before she could join the task force, Yenish launched a devastating torpedo from U-32, forcing the mighty ship to return to Britain for repairs that would sideline her from the war for several months. By then, the Kriegsmarine U-boats were becoming the most significant threat in World War II waters, and the four patrol victories of U-32 did not go unnoticed. All over the Atlantic Ocean, Allied sailors whispered about the audacious tactics of Hans Yenish, and he and U-32 became one of the most feared forces to be reckoned with in the world. The Empress On the night of October 24, 1940, Hans Jenisch once again led his crew into the churning waters of the North Atlantic. Two days later, they received news that turned their mission on its head. RMS Empress of Britain, a colossal Canadian troop carrier, had been savaged by a German Luftwaffe aircraft while she was en route to Liverpool from Suez, Egypt, under the command of Captain Charles Havard Sapsworth. Despite the decks being ablaze from relentless bombing, 
she refused to sink as fellow Allied destroyers rushed to the rescue. Under their watchful eyes, Allied tugs began hauling the flaming behemoth that carried more than 42,000 gross registered tons towards safer Northern Ireland. It was then that Yanish saw a golden opportunity. Skillfully steering the submarine closer, he remained undetected by the circling seaplanes. As dusk fell on October 27th, the masts of Empress finally came into view, and Yanish broke through the defensive screen and finally launched his attack. The German captain then commanded the release of three torpedoes, observing as they made their dangerous journey toward the already injured Empress. The impact resulted in a massive explosion, shaking the gigantic vessel to her core. Within only ten minutes, Empress rolled over and began her descent into the frozen abyss of the Atlantic Ocean. From the deck of U-32, Yanish bore witness to yet another triumph. The RMS Empress of Britain ocean liner, the largest ship ever sunk by a U-boat was no more. However, the victory would be short-lived, as fate had other plans for Yanish. Cruel Fortune Days after their most successful sinking, Hans Yanish found himself once again in the icy waters of the North Atlantic. A solitary steamer then emerged on the radar on October 30th, 1940. With the recent victory still lingering in his veins, Yanish opted for the chase. The submarine shattered her target for hours, weaving through the rough seas in a dangerous cat-and-mouse game. Suddenly, their pursuit was interrupted. The steamer had issued a distress call, and the British destroyers Harvester and Highlander, boasting the latest in Allied anti-submarine warfare, were the ones that answered. Unleashing the fury of depth charges, the destroyers immediately targeted U-32. Each explosive sent shockwaves through the legendary submarine's hull, water seeping in, flooding the aft section. Darkness fell as the electrical systems failed, and compressed air filled the inner vessel, creating a suffocating environment for all her crew members. But against all odds, U-32 surfaced. In a desperate counterattack, U-32 launched a torpedo toward one of the destroyers, but failed to hit its mark. The enemy's guns blazed, with each shot lighting up the night, and a fierce spectacle against the German enemy. Back inside the submarine, the rudder was jammed and water was flooding in. Recognizing the grim reality, the order was given to abandon the vessel, and Yanish and Chief Engineer Anton Thim supervised the evacuation before making their own exit. The U-32 submarine, once a formidable emblem of German naval might, had met her end. In her final moments, she seemed to defy her fate as her bow rose toward the sky before ultimately disappearing into the unforgiving depths of the ocean. Yanish the Prisoner In the wake of the U-32's sinking, British destroyers Harvester and Highlander went from hunters to rescuers, plucking the surviving crew from the frigid Atlantic waters. Among the survivors were Captain Hans Yanish and Anton Tim. According to their personal accounts, the survivors, now prisoners of war, were treated respectfully by their captors. The men were held in POW camps in England and Canada for the remainder of the conflict, with Yanish enduring six and a half years in British captivity. Notably, Yanish formed a close bond with fellow prisoner Wilfried Prelberg, the former commanding officer of U-31. The two would often spend hours discussing naval tactics, sharing their triumphs, and ruminating on their ultimate defeats. Despite his remarkable legacy as a U-boat commander, Yanish held an unconventional view of the machines he had once commanded so adeptly. In his view, using submarines in warfare was, quote, obsolete, all of it. Upon his return to Germany after the war ended, Yanish embarked on a different path. In 1956, he joined the West German Bundesmarine, serving in various roles. His later years were dedicated to shaping the next generation of naval officers as the Divisional Training Commander, retiring in 1972 with the rank of Capitan Zurse. Across seven grueling patrols, Yanish and his crew relentlessly pursued their objectives, sinking 17 ships and damaging three more in a display of chilling precision and efficiency. Under his formidable leadership, he and his submarine became potent symbols of fear, an unseen menace lurking beneath the Allied ships of the Atlantic. Yanish's tally encompassed vessels of all shapes and sizes, 
their total weight, amassing a staggering 110,139 gross register tons, earning him the status of a World War II U-boat ace. Thank you for watching our Dark Seas video. Don't hesitate to join us as we continue to explore the most riveting tales of the Seven Seas and beyond. Also, hit that like button and click the bell icon to be the first to know about our newest content. We publish regularly on all our Dark Documentaries channels, so check them out and stay tuned for more.